Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie, if you're new here, and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. So if you are new to my channel, I upload three videos a week, beauty, Bible, and lifestyle. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and let's get into today's video. So for today's video, I have for you guys a book review. I know that I literally just mentioned this book. I know that I literally just mentioned this book in my March favorites, but now I have finished it and I am here to give you guys a review on it. Let you know what I think, let you know if I think it's worth it and don't forget you guys. Okay, so the book is 31 Prayers for My Husband, but there's also a version that's called 31 Prayers for My Future Husband. So I'm gonna let you know right now, if you're single, go ahead and go pick it up, 31 Prayers for My Future Husband. Pick it up, I'll link it down below, as well as I will link this one down below for my married women. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to read two of the letters. So she has a letter, so it's called, so I'll read the first paragraph of the introduction, and then there's also, at the end, something called a letter to my friend. Um, and I will read the first paragraph of that. So, okay. So the first paragraph of the introduction says, Marriage is a beautiful reflection of God's incredible love story. A husband and wife reflects the covenant relationship of Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. We are the church. Jesus compassionately pursues each one of us. He has an intense desire to have an intimate relationship with us, regardless of our sin, faults, and failures. His love truly is unconditional and perfect. So that's the first paragraph of the introduction and now this is kind of like the ending of the book and it's just a letter from the author and so it says dear friend and I'm only reading the first paragraph again just so I we're clear I'm only reading the first paragraph dear friend I commend you for diligently praying through this book for putting your husband's needs above your own and petitioning for him before God do not let this be the last time you pick up this book and use the prayers to guide you this is your resource and one that I hope you will hold closely to your heart may you also recognize this as this is just a resource to help draw you closer to god but may you fully understand that there is no greater closeness to god than reading his word i urge you to spend intentional time reading the bible daily and continue to pray and communicate with god Whew. okay so this mm, mm, pick it pick it up just pick up this book if you are married not married get the one for single women pick up this one if you married I really really like this you guys and there's multiple reasons as you heard like in her letter to me you know it says like God's word is the ultimate way to feed yourself and to get closer to God and so I love that with e within each prayer she gives you a scripture so with every single prayer that she gives you there will be a scripture and then like and then so there will be a scripture like I said with every single prayer but also there's like these inspirational quotes throughout it there's a spot to journal so it also says like a spot to journal and it says some you know like just oh it says personalized so there's a spot to journal in the book if you don't if you want to if you're like me and you don't really like writing like actually writing i'll highlight in my books but i won't actually write in my books um unless i'm doing it in pencil but usually i'm writing in pen so what i did was after reading the prayer because okay hold on let me, i don't know i'm everywhere so she gives you a prayer so how i was doing this every morning to start my day is I would pray the prayer that she gave me. I would read this out loud. I would pray this out loud, whether Brian was here listening to me or not. I would pray this out loud. And then I would go into my journal and I would write what day I was on, the prayer, like, like what we were praying for. And then I would write out my own prayer and my own desires, as well as look up and read the scripture that was given for the prayer. And I would write that scripture, kind of like my daily read and write the word plan. If you don't do those with me, check it out. I post it every single month at the beginning of, at the end of, at the end of the month slash beginning of the month on my Instagram stories and on my Snapchat. So check it out if you haven't. But as my, just like my read and write the words, whatever scripture she would give us for that day in the book that goes along with the prayer, I would read it and I would write that scripture underneath my prayer that I wrote out in here. Now, the next thing that I like is that she gives you challenges. So let me see if I can find one. Okay, so challenge, and they're all throughout the book. There's multiple challenges. Let me see how many challenges. So 
So it's 30, so it's a month long and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just about two challenges a week, maybe, depending on how often you're reading this. So like for instance, this challenge says, invite your husband to pray with you every morning to get your day started with God at the center. So I slacked on this challenge because usually Brian's in a rush or just cannot wake up because he leaves at four, but like a, he leaves at about 545 every morning. So I would have to wake up at 515, wake him up, pray with him. And like, it's a lot. I should probably just do it. I need to quit justifying <laughs> my disobedience. But so yeah, now that's going to be a thing. Now that's going to be dwelling with me. But yeah, so, you know, like just little challenges like that. There's even one that says like, pray with your husband before instant. So spend time with, spend time praying with your husband right before engaging in sexual intimacy. Pray that God blesses your time together. I have failed at that one too, honestly, because it's been a little dry in the sheets lately, but we've just both been so tired and working so much. But I kind of also thought like, that one seems like it would be a little bit awkward. Like, you know, like I'm already in the mood when it's about to happen. Like, could you imagine like talking to, I mean, even though it's weird to me, I'm gonna try to do it. But I love that it challenges you to do that. I love that it challenges you to bring God into every single part of your day with your spouse, because you know, it's really easy to bring God into yourself, like bring a God in, by yourself into your like into your own heart and things like that every single day but it's another different challenge to have to incorporate your husband into your devotional time like i think that that's a different kind of level of, of intimacy not only with god but with your husband is to incorporate him during that time and to make that effort to say you know what let's pray together two or two are better than one two are stronger than one and three is stronger than two so in, in other words incorporating god so that's what i really like this book for and i kind of touched base on it in my march favorites but another thing that i really like this book for is that it's, it has a lot of topics that I already seek to pray over Brian, but sometimes I just can't find the word. So for instance, it's like seeing it, or it's leader of the home. I'll, I'm just gonna go ahead and list the prayers in here. Leader of the home, his job, encouragement for today, maturing my husband, relinquishing worries, my husband's health, exercising self-control, grace in marriage, pursuing gentleness, confidence, forgiving his sin, freedom from lust, cultivating romance, knowing his purpose, patience, gaining more wisdom, protecting our marriage, my husband's needs, a servant's heart, use my husband, making good choices, discernment, protection over him, sexual intimacy, filled with compassion, strong friendship, strength for my husband, breaking strongholds, goodbye pride, integrity, extraordinary marriage. And so one of my favorite things is actually on the day for cultivating romance, the day that I prayed that, Brian actually went out that evening and came home with flowers and I was like, how? Cause Brian doesn't know what I pray for, what's on my heart, unless we pray together. Like that's a good way to see kind of what desires are on your spouse's heart or kind of what they're believing God for is to say, hey, like, just just pray with me or, you know, like even ask. That's actually one of the next thing I'm going to say is actually one of the challenges in here. Ask your spouse what you can pray for that, like, like what like what prayer requests they have and pray for them over that. This is a really good book that's going to not only care about your that's going to get you out of caring about your own desires and think more about your husband's needs, because as much as I want Brian to change, and as much as I want, you know, God to move in his heart, you know, if I'm only in the midst of getting frustrated, like, oh my gosh, Lord, like you handle that because you know I can't. Like if like if that's the only prayer I'm ever doing out of my hus over my husband, which I am guilty of, which is why I love this book so much, then how much can God really move? A servant's prayer is the best best prayer. And a servant's prayer simply means very specific prayers. And so in Think about how powerful that servant's prayer is. Again, whenever you incorporate your husband, this has a lot of challenges of pray with your husband, bring in your husband to pray with you. Um, pray, you know, ask your husband what you can pray for him for. So this has a lot of those, but I'm just saying like servant's prayers are so much more specific. And let me tell you, not like this has not only opened my eyes to things that I need to pray for about Brian. Like, hey, I never thought to pray over him about that, but I've also never thought to ask for forgiveness in these areas that I've been slacking and that I've been going against 
that I've never took time to self-reflect on. So this plays a big role in that as well. So yeah, I really like this book. I highly recommend it if you are married or like I said, if you're single, go and get that book titled Praise for My Future Husband. It's not like she said it, like not only is this going to draw you closer to your husband, but I've felt a whole new newness in my walk with God. You know, this book has truly taught me like, I can ask God for anything. I can pray over my husband about anything that I have a concern over for him. And any concern that he has, I can pray over that. But not only that, it has a thing about discernment. So that way I know that, you know what, Lord, please forgive me for the times that I have not used your discernment in the decisions that I make. But also help my husband learn to discern things and make decisions that only please you. Like prayers like that, they're so important. And you don't, I didn't realize it until I got this book because I've seen this book a lot and I was like, I pray all the time. But no, specific servant pray, servant's prayers over my husband has truly transformed the way that I not only view my husband, but view myself. And it's building my relationship, making making my approach towards my husband a lot more gentle with the, with the much more gentle and quiet spirit whenever things bother me. Now that I have gone through this book, I'm somebody who I voice my dislikes. If you know Allie, you know that Allie does not bite her tongue. That's also a problem, y'all. So I, Allie has two settings. Don't say nothing at all and bottle everything up or say everything that crosses your mind. Like Allie has no in between. So this book has really helped me find that happy medium of approaching him with a soft and gentle spirit. So not biting my tongue to where my concerns are never addressed, but also understanding that I can go to God first in prayer and pray over that situation and then also communicate it to my husband. And that has helped our relationship so much. I can tell you guys, whenever we get into arguments like i don't even feel like they're arguments anymore I, I now call them disagreements because they're so calm like they can get better they can always get better i'm not saying we're perfect at arguing we are not but i am learning how to fight like to how to argue with my husband because arguments you're never gonna avoid them and they're kind of essential to growing in your marriage so but this teaches me how to pray over those areas that are bothering me and then hey babe I really want to talk to you about this you know I really think you could have asked God for more discernment in this area because I just don't feel spiritually that you made that right decision like I don't I don't know if you prayed about it but I don't feel you had God's discernment within that decision you know like that's better than saying you were wrong like you like I don't know I don't know anyways my whole point is this has helped me in so many more areas than just prayer as a wife so I highly recommend it and if you're looking to become a wife, it starts now. I cannot tell you guys how many devotionals I did, how many classes I attended at my church on marriage while I was a single woman. I truly wanted to know how to be a wife. I didn't want to know how to be married. I didn't want to know how to have a husband. I wanted to know how to be a wife. And I also wanted to know what to expect for in a, like, like what to expect in a husband as a man of God. And so you guys, it starts right now in your single walk. It starts, you, you preparing to be a wife starts right now. So stop hanging out with the single friends. Stop trying to do single things and be married to God. And, you know, like spend that time with God. See what God wants you to do. And then ultimately, you know, like, hang out with other friends who are seeking to be wives because if you're just hanging out with friends you are who you hang around two or more cannot walk together unless they be on the same accord and i feel like that's why i have so few friends because i'm not walking on the same accord as a lot of women are you know i'm on my that's why i'm often alone because two or more cannot walk together unless they have the same mind unless they're enjoying the same things the same lifestyle i'm telling you the way women are today that are not in christ I don't want nothing to do with it. Like it just, it's not appealing to me. It's not satisfying to me. But if I were a single, like when I was a single woman, you know, it may have been, it was different to want to do single things. But if you're diligently seeking and believing in a husband, you have to change your whole mindset. So I recommend you guys picking up that book. I really loved this one for um, married women. I'm just not gonna pick up. I'll probably buy that book for a friend and give it to her and have her like let me know her thoughts on it and then kind of mention it in a video for you guys. But I'm not praying for a future husband. I am married, but I do recommend you guys picking it up. But yeah, that is all for today's video, you guys. I'm sorry I kind of just kept like walking around the same, like it was going in circles, but that's just how I truly felt about it. Not that the book was going in circles, but like 
it's just that good that you like you even if you're saying the same thing every single time you just want to keep saying it over and over to in hopes that you guys get and understand how good this book is so yeah i love you guys so always remember that jesus loves you more if you haven't already please go ahead and give me a thumbs up also hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys Mwah.